home building and remodeling show. Let's go. Welcome everybody to the home building and remodeling show. My name is Chris Kirby and I'll be your host. I am the owner of three construction companies on the Alabama Gulf Coast. The show is about residential construction. We're going to cover topics of home building and remodeling. Are you thinking of doing a remodel or building a home? Are you a contractor looking to improve your knowledge base or grow your business? Have you ever done a remodel project or built a home? There were so many things you wish you knew or that you could have done differently during the process. Then this show is for you. We break down the process of building and remodeling and how to have the best results during your project. Whether you're a DIYer looking for tips, someone looking to hire a contractor to do a project, or a contractor looking to expand your knowledge base or your business. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Stay tuned. We kick off the show with my thoughts on home building and remodeling. I'll share best practices and talk about some of our experiences in business and out in the field. These shared thoughts and lessons learned are meant to help you on your very own journey. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. This is our first show of the year. We've got an exciting lineup. We've got a couple of custom builders coming in, but we wanted to kick off the new year the right way. And uh, we wanted to kick it off talking about marketing. And uh, here at the Kirby Companies, we've recently hired a director of marketing, Asia. That's who I have today. Welcome, Asia. Hello. Um, thanks for deciding to come on about five minutes ago. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, we wanted to talk about you're good at social media marketing, and that's where kind of your background is, even though you do marketing in general. And uh, in the contracting world, there's a little bit of give and take. So a lot of old school contractors will say, well, if you're good at your craft and you've been around enough, you don't need to market yourself at all, much less on social media or anything. But the calls will come in, the leads will come in. But that's just not true in this day and age where anybody can pick up a hammer, call themselves a contractor and start earning work. It really does take away from your value as a contractor, no matter how long you've been doing it. You're going to have new up and comers that are out there putting themselves out there, uh, projecting their brand. And uh, we do a good job here. But we have outgrown my capabilities to just do short form videos and keep up with before and afters and different things that we do to, to keep putting ourselves out here at the Kirby companies. And that's what I brought you in for. We had a working relationship and just watching you perform and do things on social media uh, that I couldn't do or didn't want to dedicate the proper amount of time, right? But it is a time thing. It is a knowledge thing. Managing social media and doing marketing, it's a, it's a profession and to project the image that you want, you may not know what's best. Can you talk to me about maybe some of the ways that if, because uh, you own your own company, you own Social Partner. And uh, first, let's talk about the the social media and how social media marketing can work for anybody, but specifically for a contractor, which is a service-based business. So social media is, is such a great tool. I think now, obviously utilized now more than ever Yeah. Um, in this digital age, we are always progressing. So it's always changing and staying on top of it uh, is probably should be at the forefront of your mind um, as a contractor, just because you are service-based. And with that being said, uh, your product is ultimately seen through visuals, photo, video, sure. um, and being able to have a representation online is su super important. The first thing that people are going to do is hop online to see, you know, uh, what your work looks like. Yeah. Uh, and then not only that, but uh, what kind of reviews do you have, the rapport that you have with the community around you, sure. prior clients and whatnot. Um, being able to post the content that you have, the work that you're doing, is incredibly important, but also higher now, if, if yeah. anything, you're going to get left behind. You, people are going to ultimately view your competitors 
more than they're viewing you if you're if you're not online. Well, you hit something. You said not only did you say you'll get left behind if you're not on social media, and some people have their push and pull with social media. They don't want to be on there, and and they've got a sometimes a negative connotation. But like for me, I use that for business, right? Especially like a Facebook, Instagram's very visual. TikTok is more fun, you know. But if you're not doing it, somebody else is. Right. And then for me, it's also transparency. So if you are putting yourself out there in in a proper manner online, then, you know, you are being transparent. And like we do how to's and we do like journeys through the progress of a construction job. But to me, it just it makes you more transparent with what you do. And, uh, you know, we're trying to fight this. Sometimes uh, the word contractor is uh, viewed negatively because, you know, people have had bad experiences. They've had money taken, deposits taken, work not performed, different things. And so, you know, contractor, for us, creating awareness and being open and transparent, we can do that through our marketing. And that, that makes people feel better when they hire us. And can you talk to the specific platforms? So if if a contractor or designer is watching this, can you talk about what the appropriate approach to each platform would be? So like Facebook or or Insta, do you have any recommendations as as far as which one is is geared towards kind of what audience? Okay. I would say, obviously, each platform is very distinct in its own way, yeah. um, especially regarding algorithms and how content is not only viewed, but also ultimately sorted out. Okay. Depending on the algorithm, it's going to be sorted out to certain de- demographics. But with that said, through social media, regardless of what strategy or tactic you take, I'm going to speak to what you said, ultimately transparency. This is a way to showcase your business, showcase how you're doing it different. And ultimately the goal is to show how you're doing business better. This is our contractor shout out segment. We are going to pick 40 contractors a month that tag their business page in our post on the Home Building and Remodeling Show Facebook page. And this month we have with us... Hope Property Services in Irwin, North Carolina, Jester Masonry in Chatham, Ontario, Canada, Arnoldi Painting in Holden, Missouri, ATC Property Maintenance in Glenwood, Iowa. Thank you all for commenting on the monthly post. We will do another post next month. Like, subscribe, and share our Facebook page. And hopefully you get a shout out next time. So we're continuing on with number 11 of the top 20 questions you should ask your contractor before starting a project or hiring them. And number 11 is who will be on site and who will be the on site supervisor. So this is an important question because you want to know who's going to be in your house and you want to know who's going to be supervising the work. It's smart for you to understand that because the owner of the company may not be the one actually on site doing the work, but they are ultimately still accountable for the overall product and the quality of the job. You need to know who will be the on site supervisor and what their qualifications and skills are and just kind of dig in on that point just to make sure you know who's coming and going in in your house and then who to talk to on a day to day basis. Question 11 is important for the contractor. As you're talking to your client, you need to be aware of which crew, if you have multiple crews, will be in the house and make it a point to let the client know their name. Some companies, service companies I've seen, they will actually text the client when they're on their way, letting them know. And it's usually an automated service that texts the client and lets them know that so-and-so, whoever it is from your crew is on the way and it may have a picture or signature card with their picture and name. There's a number of reasons why this is a good and best practice for contractors. From the contractor's perspective, the client sees, here's the person coming to my home, here's their name, and I've even seen some companies go as far as to put a little bit about the person that's coming, uh, the crew that's coming, in the 
uh, text message or email signature. So it'll say, hi, this is Chris. Uh, he is a site supervisor for Kirby Custom. And just a little bit about Chris, he has animals, loves animals. And then sometimes it'll say they are allergic to so-and-so. Sometimes when you're working on a job site, you get very familiar with the client. There comes a point where the client may offer food, may offer drink. That little pre-message with that text lets them know who you are and stuff like that. These are things that show that you care in business a little bit more than the next person that may be bidding the work. When you can personalize that conversation about your crew, yourself, your company, and make them understand that you know when they come, they may be allergic to dogs and the client may have a dog. It's tough to have somebody who's allergic to dogs because there are a number of homes that have uh, pets or animals and stuff. But as a company owner, it is imperative that you understand your people and understand that they may have allergies. So it is a good practice to conversate about that with the client and with whoever you're going to send out there. Number 11, make sure that you discuss who will be on site and who will be the on site supervisor for daily communication for the client and daily communication for the project manager to ensure things go smooth. And then, if there are other people who are going to be on site, you need to let them know. So, if you've got subs coming in to do plumbing, electrical, whatever it is, they need to know who they are as well, especially if the contract was all under one umbrella and you are the general contractor for the job. You need to make sure that the client knows the names of everybody that's coming on site. And now we move into Shop Talk. It's the portion of the show where I bring in a co-host and we cover trending topics in home building and remodeling. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. We got Adam back with us uh, here today. And we have been talking a lot about remodeling and kitchen remodeling in general. We wanted to pivot a little bit and jump on over to bathroom remodeling. And for the, the kitchen and bath contractors out there, you all know we have stories to tell. Specifically, we can probably tell some horror stories and stuff like that. We want to keep it lighthearted today. And, and we want to talk about the process of, from beginning to end, not only how we do the remodel, but just even the first phone call for, for a bathroom remodel. They're going to call the office. Miss Tammy, our front desk, she's going to set you up with an estimate and you're going to go out. And yeah. one of the tips, tip number one for today, is that we have a pre-designed information card that you take with you, right. correct? On this information card, it has information about our companies. It has awards we've won. It has uh, our insurances, right. di different things it's like that. It's got a little bit of everything. It's got a background on the company. It also has information about the interior designers. So that, know, that, that perks their to, ear up. If they want to go that route. Do you think it helps when you're out there? Because we don't have salesmen. Adam, as our estimator for remodels, really is the person that the client is dealing with. And uh, when you're out there, do you feel that information card helps you? Because you can leave it with them. Yes, it's just good for them to have. And then also I noticed on the jobs that we do get, when they do get that folder, they're using that folder to put all the information and gotcha. everything we're sending them, they're sticking it right in that folder so they have something well, and, to stay organized too. And part of that is like you can leave that impression and you can go in and listen to them and they can listen to you. But the moment you walk out, they're already, some stuff is just going to, they're not going to remember every piece of that conversation. Right. They're not going to remember our business except for you showing up and doing that. When you leave them with that, right? And a little folder with our logo, the information card, they can continue to have us on their mind, right. top of mind. They lay it on their table or whatnot, and they, it's always there. They keep seeing that yep. logo. And they can pick it up and read it and see the stuff about us and then maybe go search us online. We've got our websites and links and stuff. You leave that information card. That's a good tip for you that don't do it. And, and it's really, we just bought some card stock and we print them things out. We put it in a folder and Adam takes them uh, on his estimates with him. From there, you, you're walking through the house, you're taking pictures. and, and From that point, I'll, I just get all the information I can from them. You're writing notes writing and everything. writing everything they're okay. talking about. That way I don't miss anything because if I try to jump into trying to take measurements and everything while they're talking, 
then we both forget. Do you do a walkthrough with the client yes. and taking notes first? Yes. Okay. And then do you go and then back? Afterward, yes. Okay. After our walkthrough, they tell me everything they want to do, their vision pretty much. That's when, after we're done with that, <clears throat> that's when I start taking all my measurements, pictures, asking my questions that I have about some things because I'll notice things that are going to have to be done in order to do what they're wanting. Right. To get to the vision, you right. got to talk construction. Right. You're taking notes and uh, taking pictures. Then you come back and I'm assuming you you review the measurements, review the pictures, start putting together that estimate. Right. You come up with a number, you send it to them. If they accept, we go through the process of remodeling, right? Right. What does a day one of a bathroom remodel look like for us? How do you... Day one is demo. Demo day is always usually yeah. day one. Now we're going to move into the portion of the show where we talk interior design. We're going to bring in an interior designer and we're going to talk trending design and products. Hope you enjoy. Let's go inspecting materials, making sure that they're all ready to be installed prior to that space being empty and vacant. Yes, absolutely. So on the remodel side, you know, with kitchens, getting back to kind of the, mm -hmm. the design and layout of it. So one is navigating the design, yep. getting that in place. How are you going to use it? What kind of appliances? What cabinetry are we doing? There's so many different facets sure. to that end of it where the designer is going to be there to help you navigate really what's going to work for you, but yeah. also the resources. If you just Absolutely. move to the area, are you going to know what places to visit for stone? Are you going yeah. to know what cabinetry shops are best to work with? Well, here's another one. Um, you know, you help them navigate the the location and yeah. let's just say they walk in and I'm going to tell you it is overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you're going to walk in and you're going to have 500 different types of flooring. But what works? Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so a part of what you do is you kind of zero in once you learn the person yes. right in the planning phase, yes. you can zero in. Right. Yep. And and it helps make that selection process manageable and fun. Yes. And fun. I have so many yeah, okay. clients. Yeah. They're all excited about the project. And then they do exactly what you said. They go out and they, they attempt to go shopping. Yes. And then it's overwhelming. Now they're frustrated. Yeah. They're dealing with salespeople, not yes. designers. Yes. Not yes. people who really are working around them, their home, their personality. Yeah. Um, and it's not fun anymore. Yeah. And then it's overwhelming. And then the money comes into it. As yeah. a designer, our job really is to help you navigate all of that. Sure. And make the process enjoyable. Yeah. You know, you and then, and two, you mentioned, so... Um, you know, for me, it's great because you zero in on selections to not be overwhelming, yep. but you mentioned something else. You mentioned budget yep. and a, a designer that knows product understands where they're not going to walk you to a space that's not affordable Correct. or doesn't or fit present with, ideas. Yes. Yeah. And that is also part of having somebody who specializes in their certain areas. Um, like Chris mentioned, I'm, I'm kitchen and bath. Yes. That's, that's my heart. That's my home. That's where I'm happy. Absolutely. Um, um, so I do know my product. I know my pricing. I'm never going to guide a client within a certain budget to something that they fall in love with and they're now shattered because they can't afford it. And yeah. again, now it's not fun. Or, or even if they can afford it, right? Does it, it make but, sense? But it doesn't make sense for the yeah. – or, you you know, they're, they're like, yeah, I can afford it, but – that's not it? what we presented in the budget, you <laughs> yeah. know, so yeah. it, it definitely, you know, takes talent, but it also takes experience and time in the field. Yes. And uh, that's another thing too. design from the desk, but being on site at multiple points throughout the remodel yes. matters a lot too. Well, and being on site, especially for clients. We have clients who have their own jobs. Absolutely. They're not going to be available. We so have you're the eye, eyes and ears? Eyes and ears there you on go. the site. Um, so as a designer, we're also going to catch things that need to be done or haven't been done or aren't part of the vision that uh, yeah. maybe the tile guy wasn't aware of. Yes. You know, okay. It, Listen, and, and look, <laughs> I love designers. There's a reason that we have all this in-house now, and it's to fix some of those yes. gaps. It is very easy for you to walk in and be like, 
Where did that come right. from? <laughs> what, what, wait, what is this? Yeah. What, right? You yeah. know? And it yes, happens. Yes, yes. I mean, but it should but happen. But that's where then. it's a benefit. Yeah. Because in any project, especially with a kitchen royal, there's going to be a lot of hands on that project. It's inevitable. Yeah. You have people who specialize in the plumbing, the electric, the countertops, the cabinets, the flooring. No one to two people are doing all of that. It Absolutely. really is an conglomeration of a lot of people. Yeah. When you have that many people, there's no way that every single finite detail Yes. They're going to know. Absolutely. So you are. That's what I know. You are the consistency throughout the duration of the project. Correct. You keep the vision intact, the budget intact, and then you actually manage the vision throughout the duration. And so it gives the client a lot of relief. Peace of mind. And I think that's the biggest point. And some of them want a turnkey design. Yes. Right. And when I say turnkey, that means they want to be hands off. Yes. And so yeah. they want an updated, nice space and they need to trust that you know what you're doing. Correct. Thanks for joining us today. As always, we are grateful for our listeners and your continued support. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media via Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Get more info at our website, www.thehomebuildingshow.com. And as always, remember who we are, the Home Building and Remodeling Show.